so good to be here. Thank you so much for your warm welcome. And it's been inspiring. It's been awesome. It's been fantastic being here, listening to all these ideas. Um, I was thinking about this speaker just before the last lady, and she was saying that um, somehow she's come to this assessment that men talk more than women. And I thought, I wonder if she'd been to Northern Ireland. I wonder would she have made the same assessment. So we maybe invite her over and see if she can actually um, make the same um, judgment on that. So um, today, and I'm going to be following notes because these are kind of new ideas to me as well. If we had to make ch uh, peace with just one change, what would that be? Probably sounds a bit crazy, actually. But I'd like to suggest to you and for me to reflect on as well, a change that is practical, it's simple, and it's free. We can even do it without leaving our chairs. I'm not going to get you to do anything, not even raising a finger with this change that I'm going to suggest that could bring us world peace. And this change I'm proposing is simply but profoundly a change in attitude to have an attitude that's more inclusive. Of all the ways we can think, being inclusive is key to changing the world for the better. We are naturally inclusive when it comes to our families, friends, and people who are similar to us. But today, as I'm talking about world peace and how it can be achieved, just wondering how it could be achieved through an attitude of inclusivity that sees every single person, all of the seven billion people on the planet, as human beings of equal worth. We might think it's obvious, but is it? So let's go on this little imaginary path to peace. Just, just let's see about this in the world peace picture and taking the first few steps. And the first step is where all seven billion of us actually regard each other as human beings of equal worth. Imagine all the people sharing all the world. Does anybody know where those words are from? You heard it earlier. Imagine John Lennon, actually Lennon's anniversary is in uh, two days time. And I was just thinking about the swimmer as well. She, she was kept going by that song. Imagine, I don't know how many times she had said, she had sung it over and over again with her 53 hours of swimming. I was thinking I wouldn't mind her playlist, get me motivated. So yes, it is from John Lennon. And Lennon said, it isn't hard to do. Imagination is free after all, and it doesn't cost us a penny. So that's the first step. The second step, let's just imagine, just for a moment, that the world is working well, that there is enough food, that there is enough to go, well, there is enough to go around, but we've got rid of hunger and conflict. And I'm sure we can all do that quite easily. You know, you can start picturing uh, a world where people have enough, and Lenin would be happy. But now it's the third step. Now, this is where it might get a little bit more tricky, maybe a bit more difficult. Even John Lennon didn't go this far with his famous song. Let's imagine it's with our help, that's me and you, that world peace becomes achieved. That's a stretch of the imagination, if I might confess that for myself. And why is it such a stretch? Why does it stretch the imagination that maybe me or my family or friends, those of us in the room, could actually be doing something that really is influencing this path to world peace. And in my reflections, there's two words that seems to be stopping us from being able to stretch our imagination that far. And those two words are self-interest. We are hardwired to protect ourselves, our family, our friends, maybe go as far as our country, and that's as far as the interest can often go. You've got to agree when you look around, the me first mentality is out there. And at an enlightened level, we have the national interest. 
We vote in politicians, leaders, who will take care of our national interest. Can you imagine some of our government representatives coming back saying, well, it wasn't really in the interests of Britain, or it wasn't in the interests of Ireland, but when I took in the world into consideration, I thought we'd go for this. I'm not sure if they'd get back in after the next election. So it's an ingrained mentality I'd like to put to you, an ingrained mentality of self-interest that's come from our survival instincts that can actually hamper us and stop us from imagining that we have a very powerful influence for world peace. So survival instincts, self-interest, I'm not here to bash that. That's served as well. It's something that has helped us to survive and we have this self-interest or these survival instincts actually in common with every other species. And it's served them okay, hasn't it? Every other species also has this self-interest, survival instincts. Let's keep our, um, our genes going for future generations. And as we say, it's worked fine for them, so why not us? Were it not for the shocking fact that 95% of all the species that has ever existed on the planet is now extinct? Sorry, did I say 95%? Oh, I always get this wrong, you know, I, I did some research and I'm stupid. It's actually 99.9% um, .9 of all the species that has ever been on the planet is now extinct. So it seems that perhaps the survival instincts, this hard wiring to look after our own, to survive, to compete, perhaps isn't such a good way for us as a human race to consider. Isn't it ironic that relying on our self-interest and these kind of driven, these, this hardwired mentality may not be the best way of promoting the survival of our species as the 99% figure shows us? It would appear, my friends, don't want to get us depressed, that instinct could make us extinct. So, new instincts. New instincts invented here in Belfast today. Let's think about what they could be. Here's the scenario so far, as I have to keep an eye on the time, because we're looking at world peace. Through one change, the adoption of an inclusive attitude that sees all of us on the planet as human beings with equal worth. But we've come across a stumbling block, and that stumbling block is self-interest or this kind of national interest. And I've got two minutes to try and bring a solution to us. Einstein said, we need a substantially new way of thinking if mankind is to survive. I mean, that's Einstein. A substantially new way of thinking if mankind is to survive. Fortunately for us, there is a human capacity it's not as finely tuned or as well developed as our self-interest instincts, but it gives us hope. It's a power that we can call on and help us to move perhaps towards a more inclusive world embracing vision. And the power I'm talking about, the power I want us to just think about, is the capacity to reflect on ideas, which is why TED is so important. This human capacity to reflect on ideas and bang, be completely changed by them. This is a distinctive, unique human power that one minute I can be thinking one thing, be exposed to an idea, and wow, just like that, I'm transformed. My worldview is different. I heard a guy on radio recently, and this really, really is, a, I think, an example of the capacity that we have. He was a terrorist. He had been locked up for a while. He said he went into prison thinking, I actually want to kill people who aren't like me. He came out of prison thinking, you know what? Everybody else is like me. We're all one people. Why would I want to harm them? He said reflection on that one idea that humanity is one race, one human family, changed his worldview, 
Therefore, would you suggest he was a different person coming out of prison? Completely different. So this is what we're, we're reflecting on. The idea that you can be inspired by an idea, reflect for a moment or for longer, and be changed. What happened that guy he, as he went into prison? He said, wow, I like that way of thinking. And bang, he'd become a different person. So, that terror suspect became another person. Put another way, he reflected on an attitude based on self-interest and emerged with an attitude of inclusivity. He left prison a new being. I'd like to suggest then that anyone offering a treaty, an agreement, a pact, anything that is to do with the stated aim of peace will need to pass an eye test. And that is to clear your lens at which you're looking at the world and check to see, is this an inclusive lens? Is this plan, is this treaty going to include everyone on the planet or just a few of us? I'd like to finish is that uh, the way I would like to share with you or, or finish our little f moments together, can't believe how fast 10 minutes goes, that each of us to consider the lens with which we look at the world, would we pass the eye test of inclusivity? I love these words that are outside a UN um, Hall of Nations at the UN headquarters in New York. Human beings are members of a whole in creation of one essence and one soul. If one member is afflicted with pain, other members uneasy will remain. If you have no sympathy for human pain, the name human you cannot retain. And a fitting conclusion perhaps as the world hears today and reflects on the life of Nelson Mandela, I'd like to close with these words from Nelson Mandela ringing in your ears. To be free is not merely to cast off one's own chains, but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others. Thank you very much.